You'd be hard-pressed to guess what goes on behind the scenes at NCIS. It's pretty funny. After being in production for around two decades, the show has earned its spot as one of the most well-received and longest-running shows in history. It's so popular that it even got two spin-off shows, NCIS LA and NCIS New Orleans. So here's what goes on behind the scenes of the show, and some funny bloopers and mistakes. First up, pranks by Mark Harmon. We're gonna tell you a really funny and slightly disturbing story about a prank done by the star of the show, Mark Harmon, who plays special agent Leroy Gibbs. He isn't really the serious man that you see on screen, you see. He's known to have a very unique sense of humor, and he often plays pranks on others, too. And one of said pranks was him taking a dead lizard and hanging it in his co-star Cote de Pablo's room. He wrapped a suicide note around the dead lizard's neck, which read, I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> when away from the cameras, these guys actually have a pretty friendly and loving relationship with each other. They made an appearance together in a talk show in which Harmon saw de Pablos put his hand on his leg while they were going crazy laughing, but that just made him laugh even more. Next, technical mistakes. NCIS had its fair share of administrative and procedural mistakes in the show. After all, it can't be easy to keep a show going this long. The character of LTC Hollisman is often seen investigating and watching over the happenings at the station. In the US Army, Criminal Investigation Command investigative jobs are performed exclusively by special CID agents who are carefully picked from a vast sea of hopeful applicants. Commission officers can only carry out administrative command functions, and they don't get the training that the investigators do. Ideally, they would dispatch a big group of police agents or federal agents to deal with the emergencies portrayed on the show, and yet what they actually send for help is Gibbs and his squad, who take on very dangerous criminal masterminds, who most of the time have more weapons than they do. How does that work? Maybe a little more common sense would have gone a long way. And then the continuity error. There's also some, uh, some pretty big continuity errors in the show. We saw a very large tattoo of a cross on Abby while she was changing in front of McGee. We've seen Abby in many other outfits throughout the season where that tattoo would be visible, but it wasn't there. From 2003 to 2005, NCIS and Jack had separate secretaries. They both do take place in the same alternate universe, though. In Season 9, Episode 14, The Life Before His Eyes, it's shown to us that the reason Gibbs' mother left was her unfaithfulness to Gibbs' dad. But in Season 10, Episode 5, The Namesake, it was said that she committed suicide after being diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, there's no explanation for this one. Of course, when the show has been running for 19 years, it'll be hard to remember exactly what happened. Next up, we got some weird inspiration. One of the characters we love to see on the show is Abby Shudo, a goth queen who can't be contained by genres. Actress Polly Perret has had to go through a lot of transformation to morph into the goth lab queen we know and love. She's actually a natural blonde who dyes her hair to look the part. And that's not it, though. She's also going to have that neck tattoo we see put on every time she has to film. And, of course, she doesn't exactly like it. After a while, it begins to stick everywhere. She even mentioned how as the day drags on, the fake tattoo melts and becomes gummy and sticky as a result of her skin's natural oils and sweat. Whoever said acting was an easy job must have never spent a day on set. It must have been really uncomfortable for her since she even tried repeatedly to make the show writers let her get the tattoo removed entirely from her character. We don't blame them. The tattoo is really one of the things that makes her character iconic though. Even though she's definitely like as a very dark and alternative wardrobe, her personality is something closer to sunshine and flowers. She's probably the happiest goth queen we've seen. She's really an outgoing and fun personality too. Just look at her farting hippo who she lovingly named Bert, or her colleagues. She's really a positive presence on set. Besides being in the hair and makeup room for long stretches of time, how does Perrette prepare to play the goth lab queen? There's actually a really shocking story behind that. So she says she took inspiration from a dog. That dog was a highly adorable and highly alert mutt named Cece. Cece was a rescue dog that she used to look after. Abby stands very, very straight, and the way she walks and talks and turns around is all based on the dog. So basically, all of her little mannerisms are inspired by Cece. That is a first. We've never heard of anyone taking inspiration from their dog. Unless they're playing an animal, of course. What Michael Weatherly thinks. So Michael Weatherly was asked his opinion in between takes on the show, and it gave us two cents to finally answering the questions of why viewers stuck around for a show that's in its 19th season, and love it to about the same. There's stuff, but really, what is it? It's the Dukes of Hazard in the Navy. It's Chips meet Hill Street Blues. It's My Fair Lady meets uh, Mr. Ed. Oh, okay, that's a first. That that's definitely an interesting take. He really knows how to keep things going. According to him, this is a show that has everything except a really good hummable like credit sequence. He then did his best and sang a senseless melody while trying to also narrate a short synopsis of the show. He's not wrong though. A catchy theme tune would only make things better. He's also known as somewhat of a class clown on set because he's frequently 
seen doing some pretty funny things. We heard that this one time he showed up in an Elvis costume just, just cause, just for fun. He is nothing short of absolutely hilarious during interviews too. We could just listen to him talk for hours. Next up, a simple synopsis. On to the next part of our video, let's show you some premium NCIS comedy. Michael just kept coming up with new jokes. He gave us a synopsis of the show and it went, this is a tale of private investigators that are working really hard and they're gonna find that evidence and test it forensically for clues that might help them solve the case. Well, it's great that he filled us in because no way anybody would have ever picked up on anything otherwise. Now, more mistakes. Now we're gonna be taking a look at the very obvious character mistakes in the show. There are many instances throughout the show where we see autopsies being performed by Ducky. Ducky has always dressed himself in the same clothes he has while he's on the field. This is a big problem. It could even lead to cross-contamination. It's just plain unhygienic and a total OSHA violation too. You really don't want to touch dead bodies and then just go about your daily life wearing the same clothes. That's just, that's not how it works. Of course, you'd think the show's team would be aware of this since it's a standard procedure in the real world too. Well, another thing that happens in the real world, when Gibbs' team is looking into a crime scene or taking a round by AB's lab the, or the autopsy room, Room, they'd be required to wear forensic boiler suits, the same ones used in microchip factories to clean rooms to prevent tampering the evidence in any way. But the decision to not have our favorite characters wear these suits is probably just an aesthetic one so the viewers wouldn't be confused when telling the characters apart. Although in our opinion, it's a pretty big mistake. But you know what, we can just let it slide. NCIS is not the first and definitely won't be the last crime show that features investigators without those suits. I mean, you can't perfectly expect television to imitate real life. <laughs> Lastly, Gibbs age mix up. Another big mistake in the show was made with Gibbs. We knew Gibbs to be 53 years old at the pilot of the show. As the show moves on, it seems that the writers have forgotten that. From 2018 on, he's actually eight years older than the NCIS field agent required age of 57. This has got to be the most serious mistake. But hey, again, the show has been running for 19 years. You can expect a few mistakes. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comment section what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to become a part of the fun. Make sure to click the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. And that's it for for now.